Hey guys, welcome to our video on designing surveys in SharePoint. Um, this applies to SharePoint Online as well as SharePoint On Premise. Um, basically, the idea of being creating a survey whereby people get asked questions, you can then analyze those questions. But uh, what we'll be doing with this uh, video also is we'll be including a situation or a scenario whereby we'll have branching logic, whereby if someone answers yes, they get presented with a different set of questions, or if they answer no, a different set of questions will present, be presented instead. So hopefully you enjoy the video guys, just sit back, relax, and uh, yeah, let's get started. So let's begin by creating the survey. Navigating over to your Site Actions gear menu, we'll be simply choosing Add an App. Now from within the list of apps you can add, usually your, your surveys will be found on the second page. And from here, we'll click Survey. And before we give this a name, simply clicking Advanced Options, what we'll do is we'll define whether or not usernames are displayed in the survey results, so you can use that for analysis, uh, and whether or not you will allow multiple responses by a single person to the same survey. So for the name, let's call this the Senseless Survey, because of course this means nothing, and then we'll click Next. Having chosen advanced options, should be taken straight to creating the first question. So the first question we'll enter in, in this case, will simply be, how long have you been in your current job role? Now this will be a list of choices that we're going to present. And down below what we'll do is we'll specify what those choices are. Each choice entered on a separate line. And we will require a response to this question. The choices here in this example will be presented as radio buttons. Right. So what we'll then do is we'll look to click next to generate the next question. Now for this particular example, what we're actually going to do is not actually define a question, rather we're going to define what is known as a page separator. So basically, uh, that first question will present on its own page. So we'll click next question. So the next question we're going to prompt people for is we're going to prompt them for their date of birth. And this will be done as a date and time field. So for this one, again, we'll require a response to the question. And we'll define that it's going to be simply a date only on the date pickup, and that the display format will be standard, which is kind of like a short date format. We'll then click Next Question. So the next question we're going to have here is we're going to be prompting people or asking people if they've recently been outside of the country. Now again, this will basically, in this case, this will be a choice option, but this choice option is basically be two simple choices of yes or no each entered on a separate line. Now again, we will require a response to this question, um, and this is going to display as radio buttons. So it's a case of either yes or either no. Now what we'll do is just pointing out this question is going to basically determine, um, the response to this question is going to determine the next question, um, and that's done through something called branching logic. But notice at this stage, you don't have the ability to add branching logic just yet. We'll do that right at the end. So when ready, we'll look to click Next Question. So the question that presents here will be, where did you visit? And this will obviously be the resulting question from the previous question, if someone had responded yes. So where did you visit? Again, we'll make this a choice. And we're going to present them with five basic choices. And those choices are going to be as follows. Again, each choice in a separate line. Now. Basically, you'll notice the option here of presenting them as radio buttons, checkboxes, or a drop-down menu. In this case, let's present it as a drop-down menu. And what will give people a choice is, um, of allow for them choices, if this is set to no, I beg your pardon, if this is set to no, basically they're limited to those five responses. By saying allow for them choices set to yes, uh, it does allow users to enter in an alternative choice or an alternative entry. So let's click next. The next question is we're going to basically be asking people how they enjoyed the experience. Now for this example we're going to do this as a rating scale with two sub questions. Uh, we're going to require a response to this. The two sub questions would possibly be rate your travel experience and rate the destination experience. Now, notice with the rating scale options, you can specify the number range. In this case, let's specify 10. And the lower numbers, in this case, let's specify that the range text for that is bad. 
the mid-range number of scale is average and anything on the right hand side of the scale will be let's say excellent right and we won't show any NA options right then we'll click next question the final question we're going to do is again going to present on its own separate page so before we create that question let's create another page separator and go next question so the final entry here is basically simply asking if they'd like to add any comments for this we'll allow them to enter multiple lines of text and it won't necessarily require a response to this one um, so when you say multiple lines of text as the choice you can then get to define how many lines of text they can enter right so in this instance uh, we'll leave this as plain text but if you wanted them to be able to format the content of this uh, rich text box or be a part of the multi lines of text box you would specify enhanced rich text so when you're ready this being the final question we'll go ahead and click finish now the question that we created earlier of have you ever been outside of Australia will basically be a multi uh, branching logic question so based on the answer of yes it will present option A if they answered no that would present a different option or we'll take them to a different question so to set this up what we now do is we click on that particular question and notice down below you now have the ability for branching logic so for the choice of yes if they respond yes then we will ask them where did they visit if they respond no then basically we'll jump straight to the final question of would you like to add any comments when ready we'll look to click OK so based on what we've done so far let's actually look at how the survey appears to the end user so navigating over to the senseless survey users have the option to respond to the survey first question we'll pick an answer and we'll click next notice how we're now prompted for the date of birth so let's pick a date of birth and in this example let's respond yes we've been outside of Australia so we'll then click next now remembering of course this is the question that has the branching logic so having responded yes and clicking next you'll notice of course what should now present is where did you visit so from here they could choose one of the preset options or they could specify their own custom value from here they can rate their travel experience so let's say that the travel experience itself was okay uh, the destination itself was fantastic let's click next and we're now on to the final screen which we here we will choose not to add any comments and then click finish so just demonstrating that branching logic again if responding to the survey and we're able to do this because initially we allowed multiple responses we'll just quickly work through the various questions and specify some information right and in this instance we'll say no by clicking next what should happen is it avoids the destination experience uh, question and it jumps straight to the final screen where you can specify some meaningful comments and then of course clicking finish now the great thing about this is you will notice that through the responses that are being gathered we could choose to show a graphical summary of those responses right or what we could also do is we could take these particular survey and under settings we can navigate back to survey settings and we could change the order of the questions we could also add additional questions if we were directly in the actual survey itself the other actions are available to us is we can now export this to a spreadsheet so if we choose to export this the results to a spreadsheet hitting open enable you'll notice at this point we now have the data stored within our spreadsheet which of course this is so great about this is this spreadsheet is connected dynamically to that survey so as more questions are added or if uh, beg your pardon if uh, more responses are added to the survey this this will automatically grow when we hit refresh now of course based on all this you could do all sorts of analysis and surveys and summaries and present that data in perhaps a pivot table or a chart format so guys hope that made sense hope you got something out of it um, creating surveys is actually a very simple thing to do in SharePoint um, look forward to hearing from you guys in the future and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel thanks for your time cheers